Okay. Let me continue by introducing our next speaker, uh, Dr. Ruby R. Cristobal. She will speak on enhancing STEM learning through nat natural history collections. So Dr. Ruby R. Cristobal has more than 40 years of professional practice in the areas of STEM education and promotion, development communication, science communication and research, SNP human research, interactive science center development, multimedia production, public relations, project development and management, IT management and science center development. She also has expertise in corporate events management, exhibit planning and design, educational television and radio production, social media campaigns, audiovisual production and educational radio program, production and broadcasting. An advocate of science communication and STEM education, she obtained advanced degrees in communication and development communication from the University of the Philippines Diliman and UP Open University respectively. She also attended an Australia Award Fellowship in STEM Education in Queensland University of Technology in Brisbane, Australia. Dr. Cristobal also holds a baccalaureate degree in biology from the University of the Philippines, Diliman. Uh, so let us all welcome Dr. Ruby Cristobal. Okay, so um, I'd like to, uh, of course, uh, show my uh, presentation first before I show my face. So everybody, uh, please sit back and relax. This is a garden tour from uh, me. I'm uh, Dr. Ruby Cristobal of the Science Education Institute of the Department of Science and Technology. And first of all, I'd like to greet everyone uh, in UPLB uh, Museum of Natural History. Happy 45th anniversary. And I'd like to greet as well our UPLB officials uh, headed by Chancellor Don Camacho, our Suki in Radio Henia DZRH and in our scholarship program at the Science Education Institute. And of course, my friend, also our Suki, uh, Museum, Na uh, Museum of Natural History uh, Director uh, and Curator, Dr. Marian De Leon, and of course, all the staff of MNH. And to all the speakers, our distinguished uh, my distinguished uh, uh, co-speakers here in this uh, celebration, headed by faculty regent, uh, Dr. Amy Dupo, also our Suki in uh, SEI, and all the Zoom participants, as well as those who are watching in uh, Facebook and YouTube Live, Ayan. Okay, so I'll be um, talking about enhancing STEM learning through natural history collections. So this is the scope of my talk. It's going to be not really very brief. I can't promise that this will be a short talk, but it can be if you want to. Uh, if you just probably look at uh, all the things that we'll be discussing now, some of them you already know, but maybe uh, this is an opportunity to know uh, these topics or these concepts deeper. And we'll be talking about the ecosystem, the formal and informal STEM education, the curriculum landscape, uh, we'll take a glimpse of the K-12 STEM curriculum. And of course, we're looking at the natural history museums and STEM education as one of the growth boosters. And uh, of course, specifically using natural history collections to enhance STEM teaching and learning uh, to propagate knowledge uh, about biodiversity and so many other concepts in science and even about uh, the society. So first, uh, let's go to the ecosystem, the formal and informal STEM education. I'll just go through this very briefly just to uh, give you some context uh, for our discussion. Okay, our formal STEM education is defined by the STEM curriculum in, in schools. Again, I'm zeroing in on uh, the basic education level uh, in the Philippines. Uh, I'm not touching on the tertiary education because I know the University of the Philippines Los Banos is a very good um, uh, perspective and context of tertiary education, especially in STEM. And we're also uh, looking at the, uh, the school science research projects as part of the formal STEM education because there are depth ed led um, research that are being done by students as a requirement, especially in the public school system. And of course, the attendance to the Department of Education, school organized uh, enrichment programs, or even the alternative learning systems and other activities. And 
this would also include advanced uh, taking advanced subjects in STEM or even I don't know if it's being practiced now dual or concurrent enrollment in a higher education institution in other countries they have advanced courses offered to senior high school students uh, taking some university subjects especially those who are who have high aptitude in a certain um, areas for the informal stem education uh, what we have now in the country these are only some of what we can think of and what uh, i have been involved in we have science clubbing and participation in after school programs so i'm part of the board of the philippine society of youth science clubs and at the, the former national science and development board nsta and uh, DOST, we support uh, science clubbing in the schools. We have students participating in and also conducting uh, science competitions, both the schools and the, uh, the student organizations. And of course, the science fairs. There is also the conduct of research and investigative projects as part of the uh, co-curricular activities. Uh, Years ago, there was a bureau or a, an office in DepEd. It's called the Office of Co-Curricular uh, Services, uh, which is no longer there now. Instead, all of these have been embedded in the functions of uh, the bureaus uh, in DepEd. Field trips to or internship in universities, uh, science laboratories, science centers, and science museums. I know that m and should be very much familiar with this, and so with the other science centers. And also the Philippine Science High School would have a summer program, usually in UP at the National Institute of Physics and other institutes. Building collabor collaborative projects for the school and community. So there are community involvement. Uh, the schools would encourage this before the pandemic. And of course, uh, the uh, fusion of, uh, film, uh, of, of arts and sciences. We have science film exhibition, science filmmaking, science film festivals. And uh, this uh, coming November 3 to December 3, we're even uh, sponsoring the uh, Science Film Festival, which is being organized by the Guthrie Institute in Bangkok and in Manila. And of course, science quizzes uh, you'll be very familiar with. I'm sure many of the professors in UPLB have been once um, champions in uh, national science quiz or even regional science quiz. And of course, for those who love science and who love to write, there's the campus science journalism for those in the high school and the elementary levels. Now, these are some of the um, uh, informal or after school uh, science uh, education and science promotion programs that we have at the Science Education Institute. We have the I Make, We Make, Create, Innovate, Collaborate. It's a tech project which uh, offers uh, senior high school students uh, the chance to submit proposals build their projects and uh, present them to a panel, a uh, distinguished panel of judges and win uh, very big cash prizes and continue their project even after the competition. The Climate uh, Science Youth Camp is held every summer, usually in an island where we have about 40 students and 20 teachers um, immersing in a very uh, extensive um, uh, exposure and experience in marine science and geology so they would be learning the concepts of uh, climate change and the related environmental concepts uh, particularly in geology and uh, marine science and of course climate science as a whole we have robotics or tagisan robotics design build play competition this used to be a varsity like competition where students build robots they're given a common kit of parts costing around 60,000 pesos per school team. And we choose only about uh, 25 to 30 school teams. And uh, they're given this uh, grant and an extensive training in um, engineering, uh, programming, and even in um, communicating their, uh, about the results of their, uh, their build. And then they get into a, a varsity competition but this time we're doing it virtually again for the second time. We have the Philippine Robotics Olympia, the Felta Multimedia, which advances to WRO or World Robot Olympiad or World Robotics Olympiad. We have the Tech Talk by the Philippine Foundation for Science and Technology Science Central. 
We have the BPI Best Project of the Year Awards. Of course, we have the new lab and the Science Explorer bosses in uh, SEI, which has been which have been transformed into another uh, platform. The Philippine Mathematics Philippine Mathematical Olympiad and the International Mathematical Olympiad, which is being uh, organized by the Mathematical Society Mathematical Society of the Philippines, uh, or the this is being led now, I think, by Dr. Ernie Lopez, the president of the MSP. We support that in terms of um, providing uh, MSP the, uh, uh, the funding uh, to be able to organize the national and the international participation. Of course, recently we had uh, converted the Science Explorer Science Bonds to Radio Escuela, which is a, a set of modules, uh, which is story-based, similar to Cine Escuela, but this one is a radio-based uh, module this would consist of about 20 modules which we have aired uh through my program in dzrh radio Hemio. and of course uh we have the new labs to placentia something that uh, would be of value even to the museum of natural history of upld and other na natural history museums as well um to placentia uh, is the um online platform of new lab uh, science bus for the films, the art and the science um, fusing, we have uh, the Indiciencia uh, Science Filmmaking Competition of the DOSCSEI, which we are launching. And uh, I'll take this opportunity to invite our scientists, our researchers for the open category, which would involve professionals and uh, filmmakers as well. And of course, uh, the student or the youth category uh, would, be, would consist of um, teams or even individuals joining uh, from the basic uh, education level uh, doing an explainer's video for less than 10 minutes. But the price is 100,000 for the first prize, 50,000 second prize, and a third prize is 30,000 plus 20,000 pesos each for the viewer's choice award in each of the categories. So the uh, Indiciencia Science Filmmaking Competition is open to both professionals and uh, students. And of course, we're running the Science Film Festival. We are part of the uh, Guthi Institute's uh, node partners, and uh, we are inviting, of course, MNH to be part of the SFF running from November 3 to December 3 this year with the theme uh, Health and Wellbeing. And this is, of course, about uh, knowing um, about health and understanding about health. And uh, we are showing about 35. Uh, films locally selected for Philippine viewing. Now let's get to the second part of uh, the context by which I will be discussing uh, how uh, natural history collections uh, can enhance STEM learning. Let's look at the curriculum landscape, just a walk through so we can understand where we are coming from. Republic Act 10533 or the Enhanced Basic Education Act of 2013 provides for at least one year of preschool plus 12 years of basic education, six years in elementary, four years in junior high school, and two years in senior high school, plus a K year or a preparatory level before a child enters elementary school. That has been in place, I think, since 2014. And this is how it is. So you have a uh, kinder, six years of primary education, four years of junior high school, and two years of senior high school. The salient features of our K-12 education system is uh, would be composed of uh, strengthening early childhood education or the universal kindergarten, making curriculum relevant to learners uh, in terms of contextualization and enhancement, ensuring integrated and seamless learning or the spiral progression. That is an approach which is uh, new in our curriculum, building proficiency through language or using the mother tongue based multilingual education, gearing up for the future so the senior high school supposedly ready for employment, nurturing the holistically developed Filipino college and livelihood readiness, and of course, uh, century, the first century skills, uh, 21st century skills. Now, considering the spiral approach, which starts in, at the elementary science curriculum, uh, just to be clear, the spiral approach means beginning at the easiest 
and spiraling to the most complex uh, topics or concepts in science. We have these four areas in science uh, taken up from grades three to grade six. This is um, something that we are trying to look at uh, very closely, uh, both at the Department of Education and at SEI DOST. So the four areas are matter, leading things in their environment, force, motion, energy and, energy, and earth and space. These are the four major subject areas from grade three to grade six, because science is only taught beginning grade three. Grades one and two and K integrated in the uh, core subjects. For grade seven to grade six or junior high school science curriculum, uh, it is the spiral approach. This one is definitely spiral. So for K7, you have earth science, for first quarter, second quarter, biology, third quarter, chemistry, fourth quarter, physics. Down to K10 with chemistry, uh, the first quarter, second quarter, physics, third quarter, biology, fourth quarter, earth science. Now, how are these subjects or areas being taught? Kung maraming teachers, uh, usually, um, they rotate. Uh, those who, who have a specialization, for example, in chemistry would teach in the first quarter for K-10, and those with specialization on earth science would teach in the fourth quarter for K-10, and uh, third quarter for K-9, second quarter for K-8, first quarter for K-7. Sometimes uh, this is the case, but in most cases, yung mga teacher po ay nag, uh, nagtuturo kahit hindi po nila major sa kanilang pre-service education. So you can see that uh, while it is viewed as something that is good in some countries, it can be quite a disadvantage in the Philippines. Why? Sabi ni Dr. Christopher Bernido in his most recent talk at the National Academy of Science and Technology, which I think many of you have seen and uh, uh, have heard. Sabi niya, spiral curriculum is like watching a movie. First 30 minutes viewed in grade seven, next 30 minutes in grade eight, the following 30 minutes viewed in grade nine and the last 30 minutes viewed in grade 10. So students have forgotten the foundations of the subject when continued after a year. So parang na hindi po strong yung foundation ng ating mga bata uh, at the junior level uh, high school because they, they tend to forget uh, those foundation concepts when they get to the, to the last part of their, uh, their junior high where the mo mo most complex uh, concepts will be taught related to those they have learned uh, probably in K-7, uh, in, in grade seven. Now for senior high school, this is how it is uh, structured. The core curriculum would consist of languages, literature, communication, mathematics, philosophy, natural sciences, and social sciences. And the tracks are, of course, you know, all of this, academic, technical, vocational, livelihood, sports, and arts. So these are the three tracks. For the academic track strands where STEM would be, uh, we have Business Accountancy and Management or the BAM, Humanities, Education, Social Sciences or the HES, and Science, Technology, Engineering, Mathematics or STEM. So specialized po ang ating senior high, but senior high school is disciplinal. It is not spiral. So that is the curriculum for grade 11, grade 12 for the STEM strand uh, subject or the STEM strand. Um, you'll see that uh, science and math would be uh, classified as specialization uh, subjects and are taught uh, the first and second semester on differing uh, levels of complexity and general chemistry would be introduced on the second semester of grade 11, general biology one on the first semester of grade 12, and general physics two, general biology two, General Chemistry 2, Research and Capstone Project, parang thesis po nila sa second semester. Of course, GP, General Physics 1 is also taught at the first semester of grade 12. Now, what's the problem with the curriculum? It's kind of congested. Uh, kahit po yung ating MELCs, yung ating most essential uh, competencies now being used, uh, learning competencies being used by, by DepEd during the pandemic, still very congested. Uh, of course, the SPIRE curriculum would require integration um, by the teachers. So this should be a skill and um, an approach that they have to le really learn and really uh, use very well. Uh, as regards to teaching methods, uh, we have some problems, as you would all know, uh, 
about teacher qualifications in most schools, while in some schools, really, there are good teachers uh, in pedagogy, delivery, and technology. And of course, for instructional materials, uh, most schools would have inadequate uh, instructional materials, of course, the access as well, and of course, the language uh, being used. In most schools, especially public schools, we have large uh, class sizes. That's why we also have programs for large cl class size schools at the DOC SEI. Now, ano po ang resulta? Palagay ko may direct or indirect um, connection sa ating uh, sistema from 1996 to 2018. Uh, the first three assessment tests were actually participated in uh, by schools uh, based on, of course, the uh, uh, sampling uh, methodology of uh, uh, the Educational Assessment Association. Of course, this is Teams, Teams R, and Teams Advanced. Teams Advanced is only about mathematics. Okay, from 1996 to, 20, to 20, 2003, we are consistently uh, sorry to say that, but uh, in 1996 we, are, we were 39th, I think, in both math and science for grade four and grade eight out of 42 countries in 2000, 36 out of 38 countries in science, and in 2003, 42nd out of 45 countries. The latest PISA, or the program for, interna or for the international uh, student assessment, we, or we were 78 in math and science and 79 in reading out of 79 countries. So you can see that we have a problem, but uh, this, this uh, last two years, we still have to see the numbers. We now go to chapter three, the growth booster, natural history collections and STEM education. So we're looking at natural history collections as some kind of a fertilizer, a hormonal uh, injection to the STEM education of our students. It is something that I look at as the silver lining, okay? in uh, some of our problems in STEM education at the basic education level. But we have to recognize, of course, the challenges of remote learning. Remote learning, as we are doing it now, is outcomes-based. So we are not really sure how uh, the inputs, the throughputs, uh, the process uh, are being done. But we hope that the outcomes uh, would turn out to be good. Still, we have a congested curriculum, even with the MALCs. Of course, naghabol po tayo. Instructional materials development is still um, going on right now. DepEd is continuously uh, producing better uh, instructional materials, and they are also evaluating what they are using right now and continuously replacing whatever would be erroneous in a way or sometimes not really uh, effective. And still, we are doing in most schools, teacher-centered approach. Teachers have not been adequately trained to develop uh, and implement online modules, and we can understand why. I don't have to explain about this. Technology access and use can be a problem to both teachers and learners, knowing our uh, ICT infrastructure, our uh, access to internet and other platforms. And of course, Overall, I think even at the university level, this is going to be a problem or this is a problem, the assessment of student performance, because we have different metrics now, we have a different process now. For sure, the students are performing differently as uh, they used to do when we were still having face-to-face -face classes. Now for the natural history museums and education, um, as I've said, this is a silver lining and uh, this is why. These are the reasons why I said so. It offers, uh, you know, natural history museums offer comprehensive and diverse scientific collections reflecting the richness of the biodiversity of an area. So this can be very, very well used in place-based learning. Accessed and used by scientists to conduct research on biodiversity, ecology, and evolutionary biology. That's why, of course, it is, um, it is a, a, an advantage to university learning if you have a, a natural history museum within the university. Provide it, pro they provide teachers and educators and students access to scientific specimens for the lessons, concepts and processes, actual specimens that they can touch, feel, see, and kung live yan, they can uh, even observe and use them in their experiments. Natural history museums create interest and enthusiasm for the natural world. I think this is very important 
for students now, for very young students, high school students who are glued to the screen forever, virtually existing in those games, you know, Squid Game and all those things, uh, they're really hooked into those uh, virtual challenges. Natural History Museums broaden student perspectives and understanding on the process of scientific investigations. They nurture student interest in solving important societal issues such as sustainability, invasive species, declining biodiversity, food security, climate change, and emerging pathogens. So it is not just about biodiversity, but many other related concepts in the curriculum and you know about the world and about our existence as human beings. Natural history museums promote communication, learning, and thinking skills. They connect formal and informal learnings. They bridge local and global environments, and they promote STEM careers among students. My interest is the last bullet, because that's our job at the SEI, specifically in my division. This is what we do to track students into science, especially those who really have the pot potential to be scientists, engineers, and even researchers someday, and even science educators and teachers. Now, how do natural uh, history museums enhance time learning? First, because it is able to provide inquiry-based learning or inquiry-based approach. It can be used by teachers to employ inquiry-based uh, approach. Inquiry-based approach is a pedag pedagogical approach that encourages a students to explore a concept by asking, investigating, and answering questions. It is also known as problem-based uh, teaching approach, which also values research skills and content knowledge. So inquiry-based approach would most likely uh, be capped by a research project. Teachers using the inquiry-based approach commit to giving opportunities to students uh, to experience uh, things that will lead them to be curious and to ask questions and to work towards finding the answers through investigations and research. This also gives students the opportunity to uh, take ownership of their own learning, which is a skill necessary for their success at, uh, in college or in tertiary education. Uh, we need this uh, type of learning or teaching uh, to be able to get successful uh, high school students, uh, especially those at the STEM track or STEM strand and become real good uh, researchers and scientists someday. Now, natural museums also enhance STEM learning by offering the place-based approach uh, for teaching and learning. Place-based approach is an uh, immersive learning experience that places students in local heritage and cultures, landscapes, opportunities, and experiences, and uses this as foundation knowledge. It takes advantage of location or geography to create authentic, meaningful, and engaging learning experience. Among the benefit, benefits of uh, place-based education are learning is grounded in local communities and contexts. The learning experience is student-centered and personalized more than teacher-centered. Students are in control of their learning experience, boosting um, motivation, and uh, students also can gain better uh, appreciation and understanding of the world around them. This is very important that we take them out again uh, to the real world, not, um, not really in the sense that they have to get out of their house, but for them to look at images at this time that are existing out there uh, physically, not those that are just, well, in the, in the, in the parlance of production. Tawag po namin dyan mga CGI or computer-generated image, which they are very much exposed to these days. Let's get to the last chapter, Propagating Knowledge, Using Natural History Collections to Enhance STEM Teaching and Learning. How do we use the collections of, a mu of the Museum of, the Na of Natural History to really um, help teachers teach and learners learn about science? But first, let's look at your challenges. I know that this exists in many museums and even in science centers, uh, at the Science Center Room and all other interactive science centers. We also have this problem at the Salin Lahi of the National Academy of Science and Technology. There seems to be a disconnect between museum scientists and teachers at the basic education level. 
Sabi nga nila, yung mga scientists natin, baka meron din, din tayong ganitong situation in, in UPLD, they're too busy with research. And yun naman mga teachers, they may lack content knowledge or are not familiar with using specimens in teaching and learning process. And um, sometimes they're locked in the school or the school system in terms of developing their modules or their lesson plans. Or even if, for example, some museums would have lesson plans uh, developed for teachers, uh, I think most of them, Sana, have been developed uh, with the teachers, uh, really uh, using their context to develop those modules. Then access to the facilities of Natural History Museum is limited. We know that there are many specimens or even collections that uh, um, you cannot touch, okay? you cannot bring out, or even uh, the access may be too limited because uh, these are prized collections and would have to be preserved. And of course, the field trips mostly are handled by agents and operators who schedule too many destinations in a day, thus actual engagement during visits is also limited. So stop and go. Parang, sige, makapagbayad ka lang ng entrance fee, then sakay na sa boost in the next stop. That's how most field trips would be organized for students. Teachers focused on covering the entire curriculum, thus missing out on more creative approaches. There's no time to go to the museum. In most cases, this would be the case. Uh, and in, I don't know with other schools outside of Los Baños or Laguna, but uh, maybe you can look at the uh, profile of the school to so visit the Museum of Natural History or other museums for that matter. Remote learning, of course, we know this limits the movement of both teachers and learners. Nobody goes to the museum these days. If ever, kung meron man, kakaunti, kung may bukas. Uh, it's good that I've learned from Dr. Bersales that there are virtual uh, tour that are now uh, existing in the um, websites of some, but really probably just a number of uh, natural history museums um, and even in science centers. Uh, even the science centrum is closed to the public. And I don't know if they are now running a virtual exhibition. Opportunities in using natural history collections in K-12 STEM education would be about collaboration with schools and teachers, digitizing museum collections, design and promoting virtual tours, inviting targeted schools to visit the museum when the museum opens physically and when schools open physically. Um, fortunately, or maybe unfortunately, some schools will be opening soon, according to DepEd. These are granular, limited uh, number of students coming in. Um, I don't know if this will be this school year. Probably yes, and uh, next school year. But again, selected schools only. Of course, we would like to collaborate directly with teachers through the schools, capacitate teachers in integrating the use of specimens in teaching and learning. I'm sure you have this at the Museum of Natural History right now, but maybe expanding that to teachers beyond uh, the Los Banos area or beyond Laguna area would be good. Scientists and teachers uh, can co-create uh, modules to integrate specimens in STEM lessons. I think that is the most important thing. How do you integrate the specimens, the use of specimens in their lessons, especially if they don't really have a good collection in the school or even a laboratory in the school. But uh, I know that uh, this is going to be a problem now, uh, unless you still have the uh, loan program still available to schools. First, collaboration with schools. Uh, of course, I know you've been practicing this, uh, uh, letting the schools borrow your specimens. Uh, some of them I have borrowed as well in, my, in our road trips for our Science Explorer and new lab uh, bosses. And we hope that this can be long enough for them to use in their STEM lessons. So one or two uh, units of your uh, specimen may not be enough if you get into this. Implement temporary uh, school-based exhibitions of selected natural history collections. Baka po imbis na nasa museum lang, we can go on a satellite exhibition to, to the schools. I'm sure uh, even MNH has done this. And for one thing, I know that most science interactive centers or science centers like the PFST's uh, Science Centrum, uh, Mind Museum have done this. Assist schools to build mini herbariums butterfly garden and other similar natural learning environments where students can learn about biodiversity, ecology, and other concepts. So if they can't go to the museum, we can build a small one 
for the schools or encourage them, the community, to build one. They can choose among um, the kind of uh, resources they have. They can be herbariums, butterfly garden, or even uh, a greenhouse. Provide museum scientists and volunteers to give talks about their work at the MNH and other STEM careers. I think this is very important that they see, um, you know, you curate at the process the specimens as an area they can also explore in science as researchers. Uh, I think this is one of uh, the best things that you can offer. Being a curator of uh, scientific collections, natural history collections, is something that uh, I was so fascinated with during my time in UP. I was a, uh, a lab technician at the Department of Botany. I was assisting um, Dr. Del Rosario. If you remember, of course, you know Dr. Del Rosario. And uh, at, during the early days of Dr. Del Rosario in, in, at the National Museum, dun po sa lumang NI, uh, NIST building, if you still remember the one in Iran, dun po sa ilalim nun, dun po nag-opisina si Dr. Del Rosario, ako po nagdadala ng mga dahon sa kanya from the herbarium collection of the Department of Botany of UP Diliman. So I wanted to be a, a museum researcher, a kahit magbilang lang ng dahon at magpatuyo ng dahon, okay na sa akin ng araw because I'm very much fascinated by leaves and up to now. Okay, that's, that's something that... Uh, Many people don't know about me. I like to smell and preserve leaves. Uh, I use them as my bookmark. Okay, so uh, of course, we have to promote uh, interest in learning about natural history among students through regular school coordinated museum camps. I don't know if you have started this, but we can help you in this. The DOC SEI would be very much willing to assist you and even to fund a museum camp. So, sabi nga po ni Powers at ang iba pang author sa isang journal uh, article that I've read, natural history collections are uniquely poised to offer digitized data for incorporation into online labs, allowing students to make open inquiry, examine virtual specimens, explore research questions, collaborate globally on projects, query scientists, and interact with a growing database representing diversity over time and space. So, this is about both inquiry-based learning and uh, place-based learning using digitized natural history collections. This time, we focus on digitized collections. How do we do this? This is one of the um, many uh, suggestions in the journals that, of course, all of you in the museum would be uh, looking at or reading. From data collection, of course, Ito yung pinakamadugo, how do you digitize? So, well, you can start from not really from one or zero because there are digital collections already existing, uh, which are on open access. And I know that you can uh, even connect this to your uh, website or to your portal if you are developing one. And you can even uh, ask interns or volunteers to help you in digitization. And then, of course, using the aggregated data, there are uh, online data portals which you can access and even customize uh, your own uh, and even the school for their classroom activities. And you can involve students, interns, even uh, from, from the high schools to uh, work with you on this uh, through the internship program. You know, you, you, you cannot underestimate the um, ability of high school students in our case they develop very good projects that even our engineers, our consultants at uh, the Ateneo de Manila in UPEEE and even in UST are, sometimes they are so old by how students would be able to imagine or create projects. So they are so advanced in terms of IT skills. I'm sure you can make use of high school students uh, as well as of course our UPLB students uh, in, the, in the area. And you come up with educational products available online. Of course, after this process, it's easily said than done. But I'm sure uh, the Museum of Natural History of Ipilus Banyas is already into this. Now, what do we really want to do at MNH or for other nat natural history museums? This is what I saw in your menu. Uh, this is what you normally offer. 
But when I open, of course, wala pa yung mga digital ano don access. But in um, you know, I I I go to the U.S. every ten months. I used to do that as a uh, lawful permanent resident, not because I want to be there, but because I just want to visit the museums. I have visited um, a lot of science interactive or science centers there. Uh, but yung tambayan ko po don ay laging yung California Academy of Sciences. Tinititigan ko po yung ating sariling specimens mula sa may batang gas na dinala doon ng mga ano mga taga CAS. Uh, gusto ko silang kidnapping. <laughs> I wanted to bring them home. Parang parang in my heart, all of course, I value the fact that um, they have been um, indexed and cataloged. Uh, kaya lang ang tanong ko bakit kayo nandito. Sana meron din, ano? sana all. And then of course, yung dream ko po ay yung dream din siguro ng lahat na nagtatrabaho sa museum ay yung Smithsonian, uh, uh, Smithsonian Museum, of course, the institute um, where we can really do virtual uh tours of their uh, collections. Collaboration with teachers, we introduce teachers to the structure and organization of the museum collections and digital resources available, such as data portals, the type of data and the resources, and the possible concepts for which the resources may be used. So involve the teachers, get them in the process, guide them on how to organize the experience for students and introduce them to the scientific process according to their grade levels. We should not be prescribing or dictating on them. We should be able to understand uh, their learners and uh, their resources as well. And then we can co-create lesson plans. And you say we, that would be the researchers in the museum and even those uh, scientists uh, at UPLB. Or do standalone on-demand modules that can be made available to other teachers. Hindi po kailangan nasa Museum of Natural History website lang. Pwede po natin silang tulungan, bumuo ng kanilang mga sariling uh, uh, modules that can be stand alone uh, na pwedeng ilagay sa kanilang mga, mga devices. So we can help them and connect them to the Museum of Natural History and of course to the collections. So paano nga ba gagamitin ng isang guro ang uh, natural history collections from in a museum or in a museum? First, kailangan alam nila. They should know that the resources exist. So this means massive promotion in the schools. So you can be relevant uh, in, their edu in the education of students. And teachers should understand how they align with the curriculum. They should be able to match this in the uh, concepts, specific concepts in the curriculum, whether it's elementary or sa, sa, sa senior high school. There should be some mapping in the curriculum that should be done and where they would need specimens, uh, of course. Develop proficiency in accessing and utilizing the resource, especially if this will be digital. They should know how to navigate your portal. So you should give them that orientation. Possess the capability to integrate virtual museum experiences and or digital natural history collections into the classroom lesson plans and modules and the experience of the children if they will be face-to-face -face or online. Experience is very important whether online or face to face dapat po kahit nakasarado ang mga ang mga camera nakasarado na mute yun pong ating ang mga exhibits ay maganda ang pagkakuha uh, clear very interesting ang presentation by the teachers or by the museum staff they should be able to collaborate of course with museum educators of course through the schools and researchers to develop resources and stem modules using the natural history collections in other words Hindi lang po able, dapat willing then. And they should also participate in the process of building the natural history collections by getting involved in expeditions and other activities later on, kapag open na po. Organizing events, building digital natural history resources and collections. Get them into the picture because I know they would love to. And I know that you've been doing this at uh, the MNH in UPLB. And matutuwa dito si, si Ma'am Amy, si FR Amy, I'm sure. I am so inget uh, dun sa kanyang mga expeditions. Minsan gusto kong sumama, kaya lang meron na po akong rayuma. Hindi po ako pwedeng umakyat ng mataas sa bundok. Dati ay inaakyat ko ang Makiling, Mount Santo Tomas, Panahaw. Ngayon po ay hanggang uh, dyan na lang po ako sa uh, aming bundok dito sa Antipolo. Now, for internship and volunteers program for teachers and students, you can have them develop modules and capacitate students and teachers in gathering and organizing natural history collections and build 
this into either a digital platform or even organize this physically in your collection. Train teachers in integrating museum experiences and natural history collections in appropriate concepts in the curriculum. Of course, without seeing that the mapping out and the matching should be done before and knowing the resources that they can use and access. Develop a uh, m &H portal on your side where students and teachers can submit data, images, and descriptions of organisms in their natural habitat. I know you have been doing this as I've seen a, in your menu deposit specimens that they have documented and curated for uploading by MNH, but it would also be good to have them in some of your expeditions, but only those who are capable and are interested in doing so. Now, to summarize, there are three areas where uh, STEM learning can be enhanced uh, using natural history collections. First is, of course, the uh, specimens and collections which you have physically in your, um, in, in your possession or uh, at the museum, whether displayed or still uh, at the back room uh, for future exhibition. Next area for uh, using uh, natural history collections for education is the specimen-based electronic resources or the digitized collection as we would uh, refer to, and even the, the virtual tour, that the virtual tour should just be the beginning. The ending should be the individual specimens that you would begin to digitize and share with schools for their lessons. And of course, the development of people and human resources. And this means both the staff, the university um, volunteers or scientists, and the human resources, uh, which also pertains to teachers we should be capacitated. So on both sides, inside the museum, within the university, and of course in the schools, and even us volunteers. Pag retire ko po, mag-volunteer ako kay Dr. Marian. Okay, now I have this proposal on behalf of the DOSD Science Education Institute. I would like to offer this um, things to you. Parang humble contribution po ng Science Education Institute to the Museum of Natural History. First, initially, the DOC SEI would like to invite the UPLB Museum of Natural History to join the Tukla Ciencias Escuela Season 2 to feature a life science topic in the grade 7 to grade 10 science curriculum, highlighting the importance of understanding concepts related to natural history, bio biodiversity, and related subjects. So we would like to reserve one module for the UPLB Museum of Natural History for season two. And this is ongoing right now. So our staff will contact you. Next. Henceforth, for the succeeding seasons of Tukla Ciencia and the future road trips of New Lab and Science Explorer buses, we are inviting UPLB Museum of Natural History to be our partner to promote their services through the project with all operational and personal expenses to be shouldered by the Science Explorer project of the DOSC SEI, subject to the terms of a memorandum of agreement. I hope you will accept this invitation. Next, we are also inviting UPLB Museum of Natural History to join us in a virtual exploratory talk tomorrow, October 1, 2021, together with the Philippine Foundation for Science and Technology and the Philippine Social Science Council or the PSSC to craft a proposal that will help both UPLB m &H and the PFST Science Centrum to work collaboratively in developing interactive and engaging modalities to better make natural history collections as useful resources in STEM teaching at the basic education level. Of course, with DOSC SEI helping you out, uh, hopefully financially to develop a good um, system of presenting your specimens later on when the museum opens to the public. And to cap, let me give you just a glimpse of what Tukla Shensha is all about, where we want the Museum of Natural History of UPLB to be part of. Explore the world through science and see all the wonders it has. One click and you'll see Tukla Ciencia sa Escuela. 
and discover your love for science and technology. A lot of adventures and experiments await, made by scientists who are cool and great. So open up your mind to all possibilities and let us discover science like no other. Join us and to la ciencia. Just like when Just like you're at the escuela. Let's watch and learn. For you and me, to Placentia, sa escuela. That's it, and thank you very much. And again, happy 45th anniversary, UPLB Museum of Natural History. Maraming salamat po. Wow, thank you, Dr. Cristobal, for the very exciting and medyo na challenge kami sa UPLB MNH. Uh, sasabihin ko sana, hopefully, we can contribute in developing STEM learning. Pero we must now. So I would like then to remind uh, everyone to type in your questions in the chat box. Um, we will have an open forum after the uh, two more presentations.